my parents and my family going back three generations were atheists. Uh, my parents were uh, actually very left wing, as was my whole family, also going back three generations. And my parents were had been members of the American Communist Party in the 30s. And part of what they believed was that religion was a terrible thing and Christianity was among the worst of all the religions. And so I grew up uh, in an a-religious household, uh, anti-religious household, I should say. Um, we didn't celebrate any holidays. We didn't celebrate Christmas. We gave each other gifts on uh, New Year's Day because that's what was done in Russia at that time. And um, I just had the sense that uh, Christianity was one of the great evils in the world. And uh, that, uh, that whole ideology stayed with me through my youth, through my childhood and youth, into my early adulthood. And at the same time, uh, I was feeling a sort of a hole, something missing in my life. I didn't know what it was. I think I think it it was some sense of spirituality, which was completely, you know, not there in my upbringing. Uh, no aspect of spirituality was considered uh, appropriate. And in fact, my father was a scientist, he was a chemist, and he was very materialistic and didn't hold with anything like he didn't even believe in psychology or, or anything unrelated to uh, very tangible materialism. And um, I grew up pretty much the same way, uh, but I did feel this sense of something missing until I started studying science. I, I started with chemistry in college, taking after my, my old man, uh, and then I went to biochemistry in graduate school. And at that point, I felt that what I had been missing was something like that, and, and it kind of filled that gap. I, science is just a, a wonderful thing, uh, I felt, and I still do. Uh, it's it's exciting, it's uh, transformative, and it, it's true, which is, you know, it's demonstrably uh, valuable. I mean, look at all that we've accomplished with scientific uh, discoveries and technological uh, applications of science. So I felt uh, pretty good about that and uh, really enjoyed science and loved the idea of being a professional scientist. Uh, however, there was an unexpected uh, twist to that, which was that some of the science that I was learning, especially in physics, uh, didn't quite jive with the strictly materialistic and reductionist view that I had been taught. So, for example, in quantum mechanics, we have a great deal of probability rather and uncertainty. It's not possible to know some things about, you know, particles and electrons. And you have to sort of get a probability distribution of where an electron is. It's not in a particular place. And, and, and quantum mechanics gets Quantum mechanics gets really weirder than that even. I mean, there's there's um, lots of things which I won't go into, but superposition and things which are just, you know, strange. And nobody denies this. Everybody agrees that it's strange, but it's also absolutely true. And it works um, better than, you know, anything else that's, I mean, to many decimal places, the, the calculations of quantum mechanics fit reality. So that was a, a puzzle for me because I couldn't understand, you know, how reality, which I thought more of a classical sense, the kind of the, the clockwork universe, everything is predictable, everything can be uh, understood in, in detail, the way we understand mechanics, regular mechanics. And that's not the case. It turns out that reality is really very strange and very, well, you can almost say spiritual in a way. And that recognition, that awareness was spreading through the culture when I was in, when I was a graduate student and things became very, things like new age stuff became very popular. Uh, there were a lot of people in my generation who 
were non-religious, much, much as today, uh, and uh, were looking for something. And they found lots of interesting ideas, most of which I discarded because they were, to me, they were clearly false and weren't going anywhere. And I'm talking about things like pyramids and crystals and all kinds of new age kind of things, most of which I've forgotten about now. But I did look into it because I was curious. Uh, I wasn't anywhere near um, thinking about God, however. I, I, that was still something that I completely rejected in, in any sense. On the other hand, what I now know is that God was calling me at that point. I had no idea, but there were several incidents that occurred in my early life that I couldn't make sense of and I dismissed because I couldn't make sense of them. But I now know that they were related to uh, being called by the Holy Spirit. And as time went on, uh, I had especially I had some dreams, uh, which I describe uh, in detail in my book, uh, which is called The Works of His Hands, Scientist Journey from Atheism to Faith. And those dreams were very baffling to me. They, they, uh, I didn't know what they meant, although now they're quite clear. And I also ended up going to a church for the first time in my life. This was by then I was already in my forties. I was an active working scientist, very busy, moderately successful, I guess. And, uh, last thing I wanted to do was think about anything like god or you know anything spiritual uh however um i did agree to go to the church with a friend of mine who was a catholic and i went to a catholic church and was quite worried about what would happen i'd heard so many bad things about catholicism that i thought they would probably stone me at the door or something but anyway i went and uh i was pleasantly surprised by what happened, which was nothing bad. Uh, the priest gave a sermon about love and everybody shook everybody's hand and wished them the peace of Christ. And it was fine. It was pleasant. And at that point, I began to realize that a lot of the things that I'd heard about the horrors of Christianity might have been exaggerated, <laughs> maybe more than that. Uh, so I, uh, I, my curiosity was piqued and I started even reading a little bit of the Gospels, which the main impression I got from reading what I read, which was the book of Matthew and the book of Acts, was that this was not made up, which was one of the things I had believed. I, as we often hear from atheists today, uh, Jesus was not real. It was a religion made up by, I don't know, the Romans or by Paul or by somebody. Uh, and none of this stuff actually happened. But when I read the book of Acts, uh, that didn't strike me as as possible. Uh, I, I'm very interested in history. I've done a lot of historical reading and the book of Acts read like a historical document. It didn't read like anything that somebody had made up. And um, the book of Matthew, I found interesting, but and, and in some parts, of course, the Sermon on the Mount, very inspiring, but uh, a lot of it I didn't understand. And at that point, uh, I had gone further in my journey with respect to science, and I was now finding things not only in physics, but in biology, which was my field. I, my degree was in biochemistry, and I worked in uh, biological systems. And there were also things in, in biochemistry that simply made very little sense to me from a purely scientific background. Uh, and uh, some of that is very technical and I, I can't really go into much detail about it. But things like the very complicated biochemical systems that had to be present at the very beginning of life, uh, because without those systems, you can't have evolution and without evolution there's no life so that was very curious to me and i and it kind of chipped away much further at that wall of disbelief that i had uh, to the point where i actually started thinking that maybe i'm not really an atheist maybe i'm more of an agnostic i, I just don't know 
I don't know how all, I don't know how life could have originated. I don't know how the universe, nobody knows how the universe originated. Uh, and, you know, how can we rule out God, I guess, was my, was my view. But I certainly did not feel a sense of belief. And it was at that point that um, I, I, I had a dream that was um, quite uh, shocking to me and surprising. And by this time, since I was no longer a strict atheist, I pretty much knew what it meant. And in this dream, I was uh, walking around a walled garden trying to get in. And the problem is the wall was very high and it was very smooth. And I, and I tried climbing up and I couldn't get more than a couple of feet. So I kept walking around to see if I could find a place where there might be an easier uh, way to get up on to the wall and climb over it. But I couldn't find one and I was getting quite frustrated. And then I, I ran into a man who was standing there outside the garden and he asked me, what's my problem? Why am I upset? And I said, I'm trying to get in and I, and I can't get over the wall. And he said, well, and he pointed and he said, why not use the door? It's open. So I went over and there was a door which I had not seen and I opened it and went in and then woke up and um, when I woke up unlike the first dream which I'll talk about in a few minutes I knew what that one was about that that was Jesus Christ and he was telling me to go that it was easy to go into the garden I didn't have to struggle and climb over the fence I just had to walk in. And that was a revelation to me because up until then, I had thought that if you wanted to be a Christian, if you wanted to be religious, if you wanted to acknowledge the existence of God, you probably had to take a test and pass it. You probably had to do a lot of work. It was not going to be easy. It was going to be very difficult. And instead, what I learned from that dream was that that was wrong. You have to open up and just go, just do it, just walk through the door. And the way I talked about it later was faith is a gift and all you have to do is accept it. And that's not easy to do. Sometimes we don't want to accept gifts that we, we're suspicious about them. We don't know where they come from. Maybe there, there's some, you know, hidden obligation. It's not a pure gift. Maybe you have to pay somehow. It's going to cost you something. And that's how I felt. Uh, uh, and, and this dream told me, no, it, it, it's just easy. It, the gift is free. All you have to do is take it. And at that point, I was feeling very ready uh, to accept the idea of believing in God, but I couldn't quite get there. And the reason I couldn't get there, and this has to do with the first dream, which I'd had many years earlier. I don't know exactly when, but I was definitely still an atheist. And that dream was really a nightmare. It started out with me holding on to the edge of a cliff, dangling off the edge. And since I'm afraid of heights, that was a very scary dream. Uh, and then what happened was I, I, I started calling for help but I didn't know to who I just I was just you know saying help 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 and then I heard a voice somewhere saying just let go which made no sense to me because that's what I was afraid of if I let go I would fall down but the voice repeated that several times and uh at some point I actually I realized well I can't hold on anymore anyway so I just let go and instead of falling, what happened was as soon as I let go, the whole world turned 90 degrees so that instead of being vertical, I was now horizontal lying on the ground. And I was perfectly fine. And I looked up and there was a man standing there whose, whose voice I had heard. I had no idea who that man was. And when I woke up from that dream, I, uh, I, I didn't know what it, I had no idea what it meant. Uh, let go. What does that mean? But, and later, at the point that I'm, after I had that second dream, 
I understood what letting go meant. It meant let go of everything that's holding me back. All the training I'd had as, as a child, all the stuff I had learned, not just communism, but atheism and the idea that God is can't be real and just let that go. And it was hard to do. I wanted to because I knew that much of what I had, what I had been taught was false and I, in several ways that I knew that. But it was still very difficult to do. I knew that that was my goal and I felt that if I could let go of all of that, that wall, which was still there, crumbling, but it was still there, uh, I, I might be able to to you know, join those people who I was now envying. I was now starting to envy the people who had faith, who could believe. I couldn't. And uh, I don't know, that, that situation was where I was for a few years. And I guess the Holy Spirit had mercy on me, and um, which I don't know why. <laughs> but one day I, um, I was driving my car on uh, alone on an intercity trip. It was a long trip, six hours. And I was listening to the radio and I heard a, a Christian radio station come on with a very good preacher who really had a great style of speaking. And I, I thought, gee, that, you know, I admire that. And that's, I wish I could speak like that. And I turned off the radio and I started thinking about what would it be like if I tried to preach or give a sermon, which of course was, was crazy. I mean, <laughs> the last thing I ever thought of. But what happened was uh, something came over me, which I can't explain or describe. It was just a feeling of some, some kind. And I decided to pull the car over and, and I kind of had this image, vision, whatever, imagination of, of addressing a crowd of people outside and words just came to me and um i began preaching a sermon uh, it, it didn't come from me uh, many of the words that i used were not words i was familiar with and what i think i really was happening was i was preaching a sermon to myself and what i said in that sermon was speaking to this crowd i said um I know that Jesus Christ loves you because he loves even me and the sinner that I am. And I went through all the ways that I had rejected God and Jesus and all the ways I had mocked his followers and you know, the, the things that I had done, the persecutions, I mean, almost like Paul, but not quite. And, um, when I said that, and then I said, if Jesus could love even me, who would he not love? Who could he not love? And at that point, I, I kind of woke up. I began crying in a way that I, I hadn't ever before. And I said out loud, I believe. And that was it. And I immediately felt this amazing flood of relief, joy, freedom, everything good. It was, I had taken the wrapping off the gift. I had taken the gift and accepted it. And it was the best gift I'd ever gotten in my life. And I've been a believer ever since.